Hello, this is Mike Lively from Northern Kentucky University and today we're going to start our fourth part of box modeling and we're going to build a jet plane. Now, I want to explain two things that we've done previously that you might be going, hey, what the heck are you doing? So let's start with the first one. Notice I'm not using a mouse. <laughs> and I emphasized earlier about using that middle wheel and I want you guys to do that. Uh, when I teach my designers how to use 3ds Max, they use that middle wheel. But why don't I use that middle wheel? Well, I'm very mobile. And so I like that touch screen. I'm just really addicted to it. So it's just my preference. But you're going to have a lot more speed with that middle wheel. So I suggest that you do that. I won't be using it. So you're going to hear me calling out the command control R a lot. We can just lean on that middle wheel. And a lot of things are automatic. The next thing uh, in the last video in building the box house, you notice I export it directly from 3ds Max into paper vision using Colada. Now how the heck did I do that? Because if you go to your regular 3ds Max, you try to export to Colada, you try to bring in the paper vision, it's not going to work. Well I used a plugin. So I could do an entire series just on plugins. There's a lot of grief out there in the community over on how to get it into your particular application into paper vision and uh, we have also had a lot of grief and spent a lot of hours on that. But with the jet plane I'm going to bring it right into uh, Swift 3D from 3ds Max and take advantage of Swift 3D's, that's right, triangular manipulation. Swift 3D's polygons are natural triangles, which is the language of paper vision. So believe it or not, a lot of people are using Swift 3D to clean up Carlotta files and to bring them into um, paper vision. That's what we're going to do in this next series in building the jet plane. So those are two things. One more thing I want to emphasize is, guess what? If you truly want to be a great 3D animator, you need to learn an image processing program. Of course, the image processing program is Photoshop. So you must learn Photoshop for 3ds Max. That is the one-two punch. Now, I'm going to show you how to do something in GIMP. And you're probably going, what? GIMP? What are you doing? Well, I'm an open source fanatic. I think open source rocks. And faculty members are poor and getting poorer. So uh, we have a whole series on open source and using open source at uh, Northern Kentucky University, actually teaching this to our uh, faculty learning community this semester. And one is, uh, of course, Adobe Flex, which is free for faculty members. E working with images, which we use GIMP. Using audio, which is Audacity, once again, free programs. Uh, creating uh, video lectures using Cam Studio, which is free. Uh, and we're going to show them how to use FileZilla to upload files. Of course, building uh, MXML and action scripting. That's just knowledge. That's free. FlexPress and WordPress. And once again, free program. Some, one we wrote, FlexPress. Working with 3D using Blender and SketchUp. And of course, introducing a paper vision 3D and geocoding and virtual tours and using Red5. So all of that, a huge amount of resources which are free out there. I encourage you to use them. And if we ever turn this to, into a multimedia uh, certificate on the web, uh, feel free to join the course. So let's get started in building our jet plane. Now in building a jet plane, the first thing you want to do is use reference materials. We're going to show you how to bring reference materials into 3ds Max today and set those up so you can draw your jet plane. Let's take a look at the following image. Okay, I just went to Google. I typed in jets and I got this wonderful view, the front view, top view, and side view. And I went into GIMP and I chopped it up into three views, a front view for the jet, a left side view, and I flipped it because I realized I needed it the other way, so I just used GIMP to flip it the other way. And I got a top view. And now we're going to bring those into 3ds Max and uh, set up our reference materials. So open up 3ds Max. So I've opened up the top view in GIMP. And if you don't know about GIMP and how to use it, and you don't have the money to buy Photoshop, then use GIMP and go to my series on GIMP on uh, YouTube. But uh, we won't uh, go through on its usage, but just use it. And uh, right here at the top, here's the important number, is 221 by 332. I want to lay this image on a plane in 3ds Max, and it has to be these dimensions, and I'm going to brighten it up a little bit. So let's do that right now. Just remember, 221 by 332. Let's go to the top view in 3ds Max. We're going to go to Create and grab a plane. And let's draw our plane. And we're not going to worry about the size. And we want to do that in top view. Did the wrong thing. So let's hit uh, delete. Let's go to top view right here. There we go. Now that looks right. And let's go ahead and set those size. So right here you can see the length and the width. And the length was 221. Excuse me. The width was 221. And the length was 
332. Cool. And hit return. And now we can hit Z, go ahead and click here, hit Z extends to see it. And let me kind of control Z to actually zoom in and out. Remember, I'm using all those control keys. And I can just hit Alt W for now to get that uh, plane in there. So what I want to do now is stick my plane in there uh, and brighten it up. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Hit M for materials. There's my materials right there. And I'm going to hit um, this little box next to the diffuse. And it's going to ask me, hey, what do you want to do? Well, let's put a bitmap in there. And let's search for that bitmap. So I'm just going to grab that plain bitmap. Uh, let's go ahead and search for that. Go to my box modeling. There you go. And I want to see those at thumbnails. And let's find that real quick. There's my top view. Very good. Now, at this point, I can see it. Now, if I want to actually see it a little bit better, you can see it's on a sphere. I can come along here and grab this and change it to a square. And I can see the plane a little bit. But it's kind of dark, so I actually want to brighten that up. So to brighten that up, I need to go up one in the menu. And let's go to self-illumination, and let's bring it all the way up to 100. Then you go, ooh, that's nice and bright now. That's pretty cool. And we can do one or two things. We can just drag it on the, on the screen, or we can just hit apply. Let's hit apply. And uh, let's hit this box here so we can actually see it. And there's my plane. Very good. And I actually want to do this for the other two images. Okay. We can close this box right now. And what I want to do now is, of course, uh, go back to my view. Alt W will take me back. And now I need to put a front view. So let's go ahead and draw a plane. So hit New and hit Plane. And let's draw a little plane. And I don't know what size it's going to be. I actually need to bring this up in GIMP again and look at the dimensions. So I have my front view opened up in GIMP, and my dimensions are 272 by 147. I actually want to put that on the plane's dimensions. So come down here to the dimensions, and the width is 272. So it's very important that you get these dimensions right, or it won't look right. And the height is 147. Cool. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and put the image on there. So once again, hit the M key to bring up images. Bring up material, excuse me. And click on the second sphere. And go ahead and hit the diffuse button. Next to the bo gray box next to diffuse. Choose bitmap. Navigate to the uh, side view. I need the thumbnails to see them. There's the front view. Okay, cool. And once again, I'm just hit the square box so we can hit see that a little bit better. And I'm going to brighten it up with self-illumination by going up. And let's go all the way up to 100. Woohoo! Now I can see that. In this case, let's go ahead and just drag and drop. There you go. And hit this box right here to see it. Now, it's not squared up right. We're going to take care of that in one moment. Let's go ahead and add the other one. So once again, I need to go to GIMP and find the other image. Here we go. And let's surf along here until I find the side view. I want to go in that, the other direction. There we go. That's good. And let's open that up. OK, there's my other image. And the dimensions here are 330 by 122. OK, let's bring that up. Let's remember that number real quick, 330 by 122. Let's go ahead and bring uh, 3ds Max back up. And we're going to put that plane right here. So let's go ahead go to Create, click on Plane. Let's create a plane. Don't care what size the plane is right now, but we're going to size it. Very important that you do this correctly. So the width is 330, and the uh, height is 122. Cool. And now what I'm going to do is go ahead and go back to Materials and click on the uh, third sphere. I'm going to import that sphere. Let's see here. Hit the box next to Diffuse. Click on, I can double click on bitmap to go right to it. Click on thumbnails and let's grab that final view. There we go. And I made a mistake. I didn't turn the uh, illumination up all the way, so let's go and do that right now. Let's go up one. Let's get the self illumination all the way up. Woohoo, looks great. I like to see that in a square box, so let's bring that square box out right there. There we go. Now I can see that pretty well. And let's uh, apply that so you can see it. And we can't see it, so I, I'm going to actually just drag and apply once again. There we go. There we go. That's good. We're all good. And let's go ahead and Alt W. You can see your whole screen. Excuse me. There we go. 
And let me go ahead and rotate that into place. Good. Now that is not quite where I want it to be, so I'm going to do some manipulation here, and then I'm going to freeze it. <laughs> 